We learn today, or at least we hear rumours today, there has been pushback from number 10 on this, uh, that the Chief Medical Officer, Chris Whitty, is secretly lobbying for a two-week national lockdown. I assume that's right up your alley. I don't think it's right up my alley. I don't, look, I don't think anyone wants another lockdown. Um, we're all incredibly jaded by it. We're all uh, really tired. It felt like we were seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and, you know, a re return back to big spikes and restrictions is not something that anyone wants. Uh, but, but in the end, you know, what's the truth? The truth is this awful virus is still with us. Um, we always had to take measures in order to kind of constrain it and contain it and find ways in which we could live with it. Um, unfortunately, we're seeing an acceleration um, in the spread of the virus. Uh, and, you know, the government is right to act and want to act decisively, um, because the most important thing is that we stop stop the point where we have no choice but to have a protracted lockdown like we did um, earlier on this year. No one wants that. So what's the solution then in your eyes? Well, I think the solution is first, uh, we've got to very quickly rectify the problems we're seeing in our testing system and our tracing system. Uh, and, you know, it is... Well, that's going to take weeks. Well, it is going to take I mean, take the Prime weeks, Minister admitted that yesterday, didn't he? Well, end, end of October, he reckons 500,000 capacity a day. Absolutely, but that still remains a priority because there are obviously things that the government's going to have to do in the short term to constrain mm. this. But the way in which it constrains it properly, moving on in a sustainable way, is by getting test and trace. So that has yeah. to be the number Miata, one do you, Miata, do you support the Chief Medical Officer, Chris Whitty? Do you think he should stay in his job? I think, I think he's done well. <laughs> Look, I, I think the government in the round haven't had a stellar record on this. Um, but, you know, my view has always been uh, that uh, officials advise, ministers decide. That has always been the way that governments would work. And actually, if we're thinking about booting people, we should be thinking about booting our political leaders that in the end are the ones that are given the advice, they're given the trade-offs, and they make the judgment calls. Mm -hmm. And if they're making judgment calls that are leading to the bad outcomes, the buck stops with them. And scapegoating officials and advisors is absolutely not on. I was just wondering what you think of this idea of a national curfew on pubs and restaurants, which Boris Johnson confirmed was being considered. Look, I, I understand the rationale for it, uh, because we know that the infection rate has started rising amongst uh, younger generations, and we know part of that is due to socialising. So I understand why they're trying to constrain it. Look, I think it's really difficult judgment calls that the government is having to make. Um, I, but, you know, what's the truth? The truth is we just need to get back to constraining this thing. Uh, we thought we could do it through lots of localised uh, lockdowns and measures. The truth is that we're probably likely to, you know, 2 million people are now in a version of lockdown. And that number is likely to rise. So we are moving towards a kind of national lockdown, uh, which I think is really regrettable. Um, the, the priority for me is that if we do end up in that place, which no one wants, and definitely the government doesn't want, because I think you're right about the political cost of it, the government's got to move really quickly so that we use any period where we're trying to suppress this thing in order to get the test, track and trace system working properly. Because in the end, the lesson from all other countries is the way that we can coexist in this and see our families and work and do all the other things is if we get that working. So as soon as the virus flares up, you're clamping down on it, you're constraining it, and it doesn't affect the wider or, population. Or, or do we there need a no bit of herd immunity, of Mieta? Well, there is no country that is trying to pursue herd immunity, Sweden. not least because we... No, so this is a fallacy. That is not the Swedish model. And if you talk to Swedish officials, they will tell you, of course we had a lockdown. We had quarantine. We told people to stay at home. Uh, we they never had a lockdown. They no, never no, had a lockdown. They, no, Pub, pubs pubs and restaurants let, let never finish, shut. Let me finish the point. They will say we did it voluntarily because they have a yes. long history of public yes. health where they base it on voluntary measures. But if you look at rates of movement, if you look at travel, so people stop traveling on public transport, people stop doing all the things they were doing here. It was just done voluntarily. But by all intents yeah, but and the purposes, economy has the been far less damaged. 
they say we had a lockdown. So in terms of suppressing contact and behavior, it was equivalent to other countries, but they managed to do it voluntarily. If we can achieve it voluntarily, great. But in the end, we're still going to be restricted. It's just we choose to be restricted because we're listening to advice rather than being mandated to be restricted. But either way, we have to have these restrictions.